Hello, it's me again. It's been a hot minute since I've released anything on this channel, very nearly two years since my last serious video, and I think for quite a few people watching this the first thing that comes to mind will be concern. I didn't really leave on the best of terms with my outgoing videos being on touchy subjects within the community I was ingratiated in, and anyone who's kept an eye on me in the time since would know that there have been changes but the direction I was heading in was very clear as I began my departure from YouTube. I am going to change the name of this channel to Cheyarda of Mercia, that's how you pronounce it by the way, unless somebody fluent in Old English corrects me. Before I get into the meat of this, I firstly want to apologise to anybody that I've let down over the last five years or so now. There are friends who I've fallen away from due to neglect on my part in taking advantage of a relationship, by being too harsh in things I've said and pushing people away through emotion and arrogance, for being far too vitriolic to them when I should have shown love and compassion, and for not leading by that example at all times. While my audience was never enormous, the sheer fact that real human people have listened to me and not just empty numbers on an analytics page means I have some sort of level of influence over people, which appropriately scares me when I phrase it that way and is a responsibility I haven't always lived up to as I should have. If you think what I'm saying relates to you personally in some way, then it probably does, and I'm sorry. If it would be best for you to reach out and talk, please do, or if these bridges are being crossed and you don't want to go back, I understand and I want all the best for you. Now, I have been kicking about since you last heard my voice on here, mostly acting as a metronome on Twitter, swinging between shitposting and fiery rants, so basically business as usual, and I did give a go at writing short articles on Substack. But as it was a lack of time which brought my video production to an end, time has only become more scarce for me, and that project eated out as well. The life circumstances which took that spare time away from me have finally culminated in me getting married, which was of course amazing, but man, what a whirlwind the lead up to that was. But now that it's done, I can actually choose what to do with most of my evenings and weekends again, instead of spending them all in a scramble of organising, fetching, writing, calling, and still forgetting half of the things I was supposed to do in that time, and then scrambling all over again to get those done. Now that I'm more settled, I feel a need, as I did before, to put my spare time outside of quality leisure with my wife and friends to some actual use, and I think that this is a good contender to pick up once again. I'd spoken before how making those videos caused me to put too much pressure and strain on myself, which was irrational and completely self-inflicted, but I have missed the experience of it and especially the community through the Q&A live streams that became a regular feature and always gave me a great laugh and a chance to get things off my chest. So I do understand having concerns about coming back to this community when I've spent nearly two years continuing down what has been, in all honesty, a right-wing and religious path, which are not the core pillars that this community I had around me was founded on. But I want to try and alleviate this with an immediate declaration. I am unashamedly still a libertarian. I've come out and said I'm not an anarchist, but that probably shouldn't be taken the way it sounds. Read my article to find out why, or wait until I make a video about it because that probably will end up making more sense. Remaining a libertarian gets me into hot water with the right-wing and religious people that I now spend more time talking to when this topic comes up, but I've rarely been a sucker for pure peer pressure. Being libertarian is not cool in traditionalist circles, and being traditionalist is not cool in most libertarian circles, so I'm well used to this balancing act by now, and I feel I have a really good grasp on how to talk to either camp in their own language to make them see that they needn't be enemies, because I don't believe that I'm my own enemy. I don't want to synthesise these categories too heavily as I find that whenever somebody says a Catholic must always or must never be a libertarian, it puts a really sour taste in my mouth and only sullies the sacred. Yes, there are absolutely difficulties where areas of church doctrine act as either a thorn in the side of, or just outright forbid, some possible outcomes which a libertarian society might seek out, 
And as I'm saying this, it of course springs to mind that this is a good video idea to discuss because it will need its own thorough word. How many people that get into this conversation though forget about the ardently Catholic Mises Institute's heavy hitters of Tom Woods, a founder, Lou Rockwell, Jörg Guido Halsman to start with, <laughs> you're a homosexual, <laughs> as well as maybe Doe Bishop and Ryan McMacken, but don't quote me on those. I'm pretty sure those guys are at least some sort of Christian, as well as Jonathan Newman, who most certainly is. And look at the respect that these people have built for themselves in both libertarian and paleoconservative spheres of good standing. Because of them and many more, I don't need to feel like I'm crazy and alone. If you don't write those people off, but you are concerned that I've gone off the rails, please have patience with me and just try to be open to what I say. Lots of it can be highly distasteful to modern sensibilities, including ones which many kinds of libertarian harbour and defend, despite the fact that, in brutal honesty, they are largely held to because of government school propaganda and coerced social acceptance. But in return for patience, I promise to try and always explain these things in a way which is constructed for you to understand, because you may already agree with most of the premises for it. And if you don't, then I guess that's fine too, but I just ask for a fair chance and not to be outright dismissed. But in a secular sense as well, this cooperation of libertarianism and the right wing should come as a shock to nobody. Dissident right wingers and Austro libertarians can quickly forget entirely about Murray Rothbard's close and lengthy alliance with Pat Buchanan, Paul Gottfried's continued scholarship with the Mises Institute, and all of Hopper's writing throughout the 2010s as he only became more dissident and incendiary since writing Democracy the God That Failed. Elite theory is currently very in vogue with the intellectual dissident right and was the first new political theory I sunk my teeth into once I tried to expand my understanding beyond the community-imposed fake boundaries that libertarians can often put up around themselves. I was very quickly surprised to see Bertrand de Juvenel held in such high regard, and if that name is familiar to you, it's probably because he is constantly cited by Hopper for his insights on pre-enlightenment European society, along with its hierarchical structure and the association with the natural order as Hopper puts it. I'm so glad that I dipped my toes in these new waters, because I have seen plenty of Austro-Libertarians who would off the bat dismiss anybody else promoting de Juvenel's ideas, because he for some reason hasn't made it into the small number of writers in the Austro-Libertarian canon himself, despite being a key source for one of the most prominent books in that canon. This is exactly the kind of thing I'd been talking about when saying that libertarians often really let themselves down by taking on the label as an identity in itself critical to their self-perception and in-group selection, rather than remaining level-headed about its principles, and considering the influences which it has drawn on over time in order to come into being, as well as the allies you have available when you aren't afraid to be actually dissident about it and throw off the leftist propaganda which I talked about two years ago and so many of us in the Western world can just harbour by default. These are egalitarianism, relativism, and tolerance of destructive high time preference behaviour, which so often gets smuggled into the movement by people looking to join it for reasons of hedonistic self-indulgence, not to try and build healthy and sustainable societies where goodness and peace can flourish. I hope that by dropping those names as I did, and tangible examples of what I've been talking about, that this can at least let down some of the guards of people who've taken me for an enemy because of the ideological myopia that I've talked about. Me becoming a reactionary, traditionalist, and right-winger, which by the way means a person who prioritises order as opposed to a leftist who prioritises equality, is not something at all unprecedented in your very own community as it currently exists. 
If you are curious as to what lies beyond those fake boundaries I've mentioned and want to look into it, there's always Mencius Moldbug's gentle introduction, which got the ball rolling with me, and Moldbug is very clearly influenced by the Mises Institute's brand of Austro-Libertarian. But I'd also recommend that you start with Auron McIntyre, who now thankfully is acquiring serious success, and he's absolutely bang on the money with his explanation of power theories and the motivating forces at work in modern politics, as well as being an avowed admirer of Hopper, and critically, Hoppians. He has close ties with Nima Parvini, pseudonym academic agent, often called AA, who wrote the book The Populist Delusion, which I've recommended on multiple occasions. You may want to take him with a bit of a grain of salt, but I urge you to try listening to his ideas value-free initially, and then feeling free to make judgments. But you'll miss out on some highly valuable stuff if you go in with a shield of bias at the ready, and end up throwing off more than you need to. Lastly, I'd recommend Alaric the Barbarian, as well as of course the publication he founded, The Dissident Review. Alaric really does amaze me with his perfect balance of unflinching and aggressive anti-modernism whilst remaining perfectly collected and level-headed in this fight. He vigorously defends the ethos of Christian vitality which we often forget motivated over 1000 years of incredible feats from European knights and warriors in lieu of this watered-down, progressive and toothless Christianity which we're told to accept as normal these days along with, of course, eating the bugs and living in the pod. So then, consider what I've said, a teaser about the first things I want to discuss moving forward. I want to be careful not to make any promises or commitments due to the issues that caused for me in the past, and the fact that my circumstances could very easily change again if I, God willing, become an expectant father, and I could watch all of this free time once again disappear in a puff of smoke, and for a lot longer than just a couple of years. I also don't want to say that I will always make videos with a libertarian focus. If I want to discuss why I'm now Catholic rather than Protestant as I briefly was, you might prefer to watch paint dry, and that's not a topic which I would deem acceptable to shoehorn such political sentiments into. If I want to discuss value-free observations of power and how if you don't use it for good, somebody else will use it for evil, I will likely invoke lessons for libertarians, but not necessarily make it all about trying to ease them into the idea and have it as more of a jump into the deep end. I'm certainly motivated right now to make videos doing this easing in and holding of hands approach, as I don't want to alienate people who have been an important part of my life if I don't need to but I won't promise that future videos will have the same tone and focus as the ones I made previously. Mostly because at this stage, I simply don't know where it's going to go, and don't want to make any promises on such an unsure foundation. I think that wraps us up for now, but I'll leave on an announcement of another Q&A, which I imagine many people will want to jump on after all this time. This will be on Saturday, the 2nd of March, at 9pm British time, 4pm US East and 1pm US West. Like before, I will make a community post where you should put your questions on for me to read through. I hope you're at least pleased to hear me again and that what you've heard doesn't make you hate me. And for now, I'll look forward to getting these wheels turning again and hopefully enjoy the ride along with you all. Once again, take it easy.